Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Lads, Dads and Grandads. Delighted to have you once again log on for our monthly video of a thought and an interview with uh, men from Hamilton Road Baptist Church. You find us in our new regular time slot. So look for new content going out from Lads, Dads and Grandads on the last Saturday of every month. Uh, make sure to tune in next month for us as well. Uh, today, you will have the privilege of hearing from Luke Cheeseman, one of our very gifted uh, uh, young men in church who will be bringing a thought from God's word. And then you're going to hear an interview that Stuart and I have had the privilege of uh, hosting with uh, another guy uh, from our committee this time, uh, Justin Lee Morrison. Would really, really encourage you to um, take on board what Justin is uh, saying to us uh, regarding um, his journey with mental health and his encouragement with that. And we just say to you guys, um, we're here for you. Um, you know, lift the phone, send the text through. Um, we, we would love to hear from you, even if it's just to have a general catch up or if there's something uh, that you just would like to talk to somebody about, uh, we would love to um, just hear from you and uh, give you uh, our time to uh, just, yeah, have a chat and see how things are going with you. Do get into contact with us. Uh, even if you're able to PM or send a message to uh, the church uh, through the Facebook uh, page as well, if you want somebody to talk to, if you're struggling that at this time, don't stay silent about it. Talk to people. We're here to listen. So I do hope you enjoy the interview with Justin and the message that Luke has from God's word. Thank you for tuning in. Hi, Justin. Really good to have you with us uh, for the interview here. Even Stuart and Aaron, good to be here with you. Nice to see you, Justin. Thanks again for your time. No problem. We're going to kick off here, Justin. Um, so, as I say, it's great to um, be able to catch up with you and, um, yeah, just sort of share with the men at Hamilton Road and those who are listening. Uh, just give them an opportunity to find out a little bit more about yourself. So, just on that note, um, I know we know who you are, but if you'd like to um, share who you are, uh, your name, uh, just a wee bit about yourself. Uh, are you married? Have you any children? and uh, hobbies or sort of your employment or anything that you would uh, feel comfortable to share with us, please. No problem. Well, for those that don't know me, uh, I'm Justin. I am coming 42 later this year. That's, that's quite scary. <laughs> it's, it's really sneaked up on me. Um, I've been married now for 15 years to Lorraine, and we have one son, who is eight years old, called Noah, who is responsible for all the destruction and, and mess in our house. Um, I have been at Hamilton Road for three and a bit years now, and it honestly feels like I've been there a lot longer, in a good way. <laughs> um, from the first time we turned up, it just felt like we were home. Um, prior to that, we were 17 years with, nearly 17 years with City Church in Belfast, but we felt the need to move because at the time our son was um, five years old and we were living in Bangor and going to church in Belfast and we really felt a calling to be active and going to a church on our doorstep. So as much as I don't like change, <laughs> we, we really did feel that calling to, uh, to move closer to home and, and be, be active in our community. Um, I have been uh, an engineer now for 20 years and uh, I've had some good, some good times, some fun doing that and that ties directly into my hobbies. I love to tinker with things. I'm quite happy to go out into the workshop and uh, get a pile of old tools out and restore them to look like new or else just sort of like, you know, even play around with more modern bits of technology like 3D printing. I've been doing a lot of that recently with the whole... Uh, uh, PPE uh, provision for for NHS and key workers. So yeah, that's that's me in a in a very sort of concise nutshell there. Very good. Um, you you've mentioned that you've been coming along to Hamilton Road um, for the past three years, and we are mm -hmm. uh, very glad to have you and your family along with us. And you've been a real have uh, had a real input and uh, significance. Uh, 
uh, blessing to us there. Mm-hmm. But could you maybe share with us? We we know um, you've been able to bring one of your real big hobbies that you have uh, to some of the men's events uh, that <laughs> we have, and I know it's a big personal thing. So maybe you'd like to share with us uh, how you maybe got into that world. Yes, I I love gaming. And I'm not talking about sitting down in a PlayStation or an Xbox playing computer games, although I do like that too. I'm a big fan of uh, board games, tabletop gaming, war gaming, anything involving like a deck of cards or dice, any, any type of gaming at all. But specifically, games that actually engage people and get people up on their feet and get people engaged. Now, I, whenever I first sort of mentioned, what about doing games in a church? There are a lot of people who are like, oh, you know, gaming, well, I'm not really in the games, but some of the people who have actually come along to the game site and played, I have seen an interesting side come out in their personalities where they get really competitive and they get really sort of enthused. And even whenever we, uh, at the last game site, get down to the last sort of couple of rounds, seeing everybody really sort of competing and seeing some people who are usually quite shy and quiet and timid, all of a sudden completely changed, going, I have to win this game. And it, it's brilliant. I just love seeing people sort of like, you know, express that side of their personality and sort of really sort of just really get engaged and have fun gaming. So, yeah, I, we have had two games nights so far and uh, we've had gaming at some of the other men's events as well. And do you know what? If it involves like standing up in front of everybody and, and, and having a bit of a laugh or making a fool of yourself for for five minutes or ten minutes, do you know what? That's great fun. It's good fun for me. It's good fun for everybody taking part. And I, I just love to encourage people to get involved. Uh, There's a few of us have have led the, those games nights and uh, introduced those games to to people uh, together. But um, you've taken uh, games to a, a different level than the rest of us have. There's a, a few of the guys in particular who own a lot of the games, like yourself. But uh, you've actually started to create some games I, as well. Tell us a little I bit. I have, yes. I have several board games which are quite late on in development. I've got a whole bunch of other ones which are sort of halfway there. Um, but of one that I'm ready to sort of pull the trigger on, if you will, and it's, it's been through play testing and everything, and it's, it's ready to go to print later this year. It would have been late last year, but things get held up for Christmas, and then it would have been early this year, and then COVID hit. So later this year, all being well, I will be uh, in print. Um, I've been in print as a play tester on other board games, which are out in the market, but it'll be nice to actually have got to that stage where I've actually had something printed that I've come up with and developed and, and tested and tweaked and changed and finalized and approved artwork for and everything. So it's it's a wee bit of a, a dream come true in some regard. So, yeah. I'll right. keep you all posted. <laughs> um, Justin, if, you, uh, if you'd be able to share with us then, uh, you've mentioned you, know, you live now in Bangor and your family and you're an engineer. But maybe you could tell us a wee bit about your childhood. Um, have you yeah. always lived in Bangor? Um, and do you have any siblings? And um, yeah, no from problem. Your, well, from your young age, was uh, were you brought up in the church environment? Just could you share a wee bit about that with us, please? No problem. Well, I was born in arts, but I quickly recovered and moved to Bangor. <laughs> <laughs> There's always been a Bangor arts rivalry. I don't know where that comes from, but yes, um, I grew up in Bangor, um, and I was always sent to Sunday school as a child. Um, my parents weren't really active in the, the local church. At that time, it was a free Methodist church at Tarview. Um, but I was always encouraged to go. And I always, even from a young age, just knew this is right. This, this is, I, felt, I felt at home, away from home in the church. Um, so I grew up there and then my, my father started to become more active in the church. He started to get involved. And uh, then I ended up moving to another church. I started getting involved with youth fellowships uh, and crusaders down in Ballyhome, at the Ballyhome Methodist. Um, then my brother came along quite a bit, like 10 years between us. It's, it's a bit of a gap. Um, he never really was involved in any church activities at all until 
until I started coming to Hamilton Road. He came to a few things in, in City Church, but it was a bit of a travel for him. But now that we're at Hamilton Road, he started to, to come along, initially through games nights and some of the men's events. But he's actually now sort of finding his place with some of the people there and enjoying it. Um, so, yeah, my, like I say, my parents never really been active in the church. My dad has faith and uh, he, he has been along to the church a few times. Um, my mum's been along a couple of times as well, but they're not active church goers. But I've, I've always personally known, no matter where church I've went to, it's always been the place where I'm supposed to go. You know, I've, I've always felt that need, that desire, that, that encouragement walking into a church, just knowing I'm supposed to be here. Um, so yeah, my journey then took me to uh, City Church in Belfast. Uh, my wife was at Queen's University at the time and she was attending City Church and uh, I got dragged along one day and uh, absolutely loved it. Really did enjoy my time there, but whenever our son came along, it, it, it changed. City Church is, is a very sort of young church with a high transition of, of people. People come along and stay for three or four years while they're at uni and then move on. So we kind of became some of the longest serving people there for a while. And uh, our, our time had sort of, we'd been there, we'd, we'd done what we had to do. We were very heavily involved, but it, it just came a time for us to move on. So I've always had a connection to the church. I've always been involved, things like, like I mentioned, Crusaders, even things like Summer Madness and Sism, I've always had a connection there. And I'm just, I'm so, so pleased that in the last year, my brother is now, getting involved in things and coming along as well. And I just hope that that blossoms and flourishes even more. And uh, yeah, that's that's my history and that's how I've ended up with you guys. <laughs> Thank you very it's much. good to hear uh, uh, about that, that upbringing that you've had. Uh, but tell us more about uh, a time in your life whenever you decided to really put your trust in God and to follow Jesus and to uh, ask him to take your sins away. Tell us uh, about that time yeah. whenever you, you really became a Christian. Yeah, no problem. Um, like I say, I've always been involved with church and Sunday school uh, to some degree. And I always knew that uh, that was what I had to do. I had to, you know, accept Christ into my life and, and ask for forgiveness. And I, I always knew that was something I wanted to do. I'd done it a couple of times when I was younger, but the time it always sticks out in my mind, it was the first time I went to Summer Madness. Goodness, I think I was 13 or 14, in my early teens anyway. And being away from home, being in a campsite in uh, Gosford, I think it was at the time, I'd been before actually, but there was one time it was in Gosford, just being surrounded by a field of thousands of other like-minded Christians away from home in that environment. That particular weekend, I just remember thinking, this, this is fantastic. This is phenomenal. You could really feel the presence of the Spirit and the Lord in, in that field. <laughs> in that freezing cold field, you could feel the warmth of, of the Lord. And I just remember after the, the big top service one night, actually walking back up to my tent on my own and just asking, you know, uh, and saying to God, this, this, I want this all the time. I want this feeling all the time. I didn't want the coldest of my campsite all the time. I just wanted the warmth of, of the Lord in my life all the time. And I have never, never looked back. I never have looked back. He's always been there for me, the highs and the lows. And yes, there's been times where I felt like I've been standing in the middle of a cold field again, but I've always had that warmth at my core, you know, since, since asking him to be in my life and and, uh, and to guide me and be in my actions, be in my words. He's always been there for me. And it's it's a phenomenal feeling that uh, once once you ask for that, you're never alone again. You're you're always with him, you're always with people and you'll always find other people. That's brilliant, thank you. Uh, just, no problem, yeah. I suppose just got me thinking there. Um, You've alluded to your age and the time then you give your life to Christ. Um, is there maybe a time, if you're happy enough to share with us, um, that you could testify to God's grace in your life and um, maybe in a challenging situation and just maybe as a word of encouragement to those who are maybe listening to this, uh, just how you've been able to prove God's faithfulness in your walk and um, even as a married man. And, yeah. Well, God has always been there. Uh, there. There are times in life, don't get me wrong, life is hard, life is challenging. And myself in particular, I, I've struggled the last few years with uh, 
with a bit of stress, quite a bit of stress and with some mental health issues where I just have felt the absolute pits of despair beyond reason. Uh, I mean, anything else in life you can sort of explain away, but I've just felt myself, uh, like I said, in recent years, just, you can't, you can't describe it. It's, it's a mental imbalance, but I've always known Christ is there. I've always known the Lord is there for me, but I still had this sort of nagging feeling that I'm just not the person I could be. I'm not living up to who I should be. I've always had that wee doubt in the back of my mind and it's brought me down. It has. And that was probably because I entered a period in my life where I was sort of excelling at work, doing really well in my life and actually getting maybe a wee bit sort of arrogant and just letting that sneak in. It, it, it damaged me. And then from that, I've always had that sort of wee doubt in my head. There's always been this voice where there was always this voice to say, I've got through it. That just say, you can do better. You can go further. You can go harder. You know, you can, you can, you could be a better person. And in recent years, especially in the last year, I've come to realize my life at home, my life with Christ is more important than my life in an office or my life in a factory or my life behind a till somewhere. And Whenever I went through that, through that period in life where I was thinking, you know, look at everything I've done. I'm fantastic. I've done great things. That wasn't really me. That was sin getting into my life and just saying, uh, giving me pride. You know, that was pride coming to the service. And I, like I said, it damaged me as a person. I became a wee bit arrogant. Uh, and I just, I had to get that out of my life. It didn't realize how far it got hold of me. And I, I just, like I say, I... I I started to dwell on it. I, I wallowed in it, and then the depression kicked in. And then I realized I'd become someone who I shouldn't be. I'd become someone who was not a good example for the Lord. And I mean, yes, I tried medication, I tried therapy, and everything. But honestly, what it all came down to, what really helped me through, it were two things: um, prayer and fellowship. Fellowship at home with my wife and my family, and fellowship with the guys in the church. Just having people there in my life that I know won't judge me if I could say to some of the guys listen guys I need to have a chat Christians in church who I can go and talk to and just say this is what's going through my mind this is how I feel who are not going to judge me and just say right let's work through this together let's pray for you prayer has fixed everything in my life it really has I've become a better person because of prayer, I've become a better person because of fellowship. And that really brings me through to the crux of what I'm getting to, is that men don't like to open up. Men don't like to talk about anything, problems, whether they're mental, financial, physical. Men don't like to talk. I want to change people's attitude about that. Men need to open up. Men need to talk. Men have mental health problems that they never want to admit to. I've been there. And I want to encourage everybody, you do not need to be scared to come and talk to any of the guys in church. You don't need to be scared to lift the phone or start a Zoom chat or within social distance guidelines, go and meet some of the guys for a coffee. Go and do that. You, know, you can only improve yourself through prayer, through fellowship. It's never going to damage you. If you're, if you're open to the Lord coming into your life, if you're open to, to fellowship and to talking to people, you're only going to get and become a better person. So yeah, every every time I've went in prayer to the Lord, He has always been there for me. Thanks for sharing that, Justin. Uh, listen, it's been a real blessing uh, for uh, us um, having you in this interview, but also having you on the men's group committee. Uh, yep. So uh, you shared a wee bit about your, your uh, time in Hamilton Hill Baptist and your, your life leading up to that uh, but uh, you've had a, a real blessed time in the church as well um, can you remember a, a little bit of, a bit about whenever you were baptized the night you were baptized do you remember who was looking at you whenever you were coming up out of the waters do you know I, I will never forget um, that whenever I came up out of the waters my son who was seven at the time was, was on his knees just right in front of me. So as my head came up, there was my son looking at me. And I just remember seeing like 
the amazement, the awe in his eyes when he came up. And I saw two things. I saw, I saw my son looking at me, but I just saw, I just, I felt the Lord was looking at me as well, which I know he was, but just to have those two things in my life, knowing the Lord was looking down at me as I came up out of the water and seeing my son looking at me, it, it was just fantastic. I will never forget that. It was, it was an amazing feeling. And it's one of the things I, I probably should have been baptized a lot sooner in my life. I really should have. And I don't know why I put it off so long, but I'm just so blessed. I'm so happy. I'm so glad that I was able to do it with my new church family in front of so many friends and family. And, and then just to have my son there whenever, whenever it happened. It was fantastic. It really was. So, yeah. Share with us a, a little bit about your time on the men's committee. Tell us when that started and the adventures you've had uh, with us since. So, yeah, I, I've, I've been with the men's committee now from earlier in 2020, just prior to lockdown. Um, and lockdown hasn't made things easy. <laughs> There's been a lot of uh, talking and discussions on Zoom, but, you know, the needs must. We, we use the tools we have. And uh, I like I said, I've already mentioned, would always be pushing activities. I mean, as a group of men, let's go and do manly things. Let's go and climb a mountain. Let's go out for a walk in the forest or whatever. But there are things we have been limited to that we can't really do because of COVID. And we can't really involve ourselves with gaming because I would always push that as well as, as men's activities. But um, I've had a real push again. I've mentioned mental health. I've had a real push to have anything that can help men cope and like I say whether it is just sort of you know getting a group of the guys together for a men's breakfast or a walk along the coast or whatever I think men need to be involved in activities because all too often men are just happy enough to sort of see each other at church have a chat go home watch tv the rest of the day you know and I I would like it if if we could all sort of be more active, do things that can sort of, you know, encourage us all to get up and get out and do stuff together. Now, that's going to be a challenge in itself going forward over the next couple of months, but I'm sure we'll find a way around it. But um, yeah, so my my sort of task, if you will, with the men is to try and sort of try and get us to do stuff that doesn't just involve sitting down. (laughs) That's not going to be an easy challenge, and, and doubly so because of COVID. But um, yeah, I've enjoyed my time so far with the men's committee. And uh, I mean, if you'll look at me, I'll encourage everybody. If I have to go and kick a few people to get them outside, I'll gladly go and do that too. But good things happen when you get men together, especially around a barbecue, Aaron. No pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know when that would be nice to be able to offer those. Uh, Things are always good when there's food, I say, but... Yes, yes. There's nothing I miss more than, than the men's breakfast. I, I really do miss them. And uh, just getting the guys down. I mean, you have to tempt guys away out of the house sometimes with a bacon bath. You know, that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. And I'm always up for that. <laughs> and you that. even started bringing Noah along to those men's breakfasts as well. I did, yes. Um, he wasn't, I thought he would have been the youngest, but you brought Daniel. So <laughs> you beat me by a year. <laughs> but... Yes, I, another thing I suggested with the men's group as well, potentially, is to sort of get, we'll have prayer triplets, but to get a, not necessarily a triplet, but three age groups together in a group. So have a couple of senior guys, older people, if you want to call them that, a couple of uh, good looking middle-aged people like yourselves, and some of the, you know, teenage sort of student level ones, and get, get a group together, like a prayer group made of three different generations, if you will, just because some of the, some of the older guys in church, I could listen to their stories all day, all day and all night. But some of the younger students have some amazing insight as well. And I think sometimes when you get a men's group together, it's all the same age group, but I think you miss, you miss some of the wisdom and you miss some of the insight and you miss some of the anecdotes. So I, I would really like to push again for sort of the men to sort of have groups that, have a range of ages from the sort of student age right through to the our age group on up to uh, some of the more older gentlemen in church. It's very important, I think, that you can gain so much, so much knowledge and so much insight and so much wisdom from some of those guys. And you're always going to be surprised with some of the younger guys too. 
So yeah, I, 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 will, I want to actively encourage more activities where we have that sort of spectrum of ages. Just, just before we let you go, um, we, we are, we, the opportunity we've had with all our committee members and uh, men who have interviewed from the church, would you have uh, a finishing word or just a word of encouragement uh, that you would um, like to just give to our listeners? Uh, yes. Um, you've talked about I, mental health. You've talked about, um, you know, being actively involved and breaking that stigma of chatting uh, and sort of sharing our thoughts and problems. But what would your uh, final encouragement word be to those who are listening to this? Well, I've got a wee reading here from the end of Galatians, uh, Galatians 6. Um, I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just going to read a wee bit at the start and another wee bit from it. Um, it's about doing good to all. I'm a great believer that you, know, you have to do good to all in your life. You have to be a good example. And especially when it comes to things like mental health or anybody who's struggling with anything, we have to be there for each other. We have to be there for everyone outside the church. We have to be there for anybody who can cross our path. We have to be ready and we have to be a good example. So I'm just going to read a couple of wee bits here. So this is from Galatians 6. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself or you may also be tempted. Carry each other's burdens in this way and you will fulfill the law of Christ. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. That, that is something that has really spoken to me recently about sharing the burdens of not just people in the church, but sharing everyone's burden, specifically the guys. Guys, come and talk. If you need to talk about anything, we're all there for each other. We have to be there for each other. We have to help share those burdens and just, just be the best example of who we can be. And we have to be the best example of who we can be and be ready to be that example at the drop of a hat because we never know who we're going to pass on the street. And we have to be ready to be there and be good and, and spread the word of God to them and be an example to them. Uh, Justin, thank you so much for uh, sharing with us and for that interview. We've really been blessed on having you on the committee and uh, all of us on the, the committee have enjoyed each other's company in Zoom. We look forward to whenever we can all meet again in person, whenever uh, things start to clear up again in the future. Uh, but for the meantime, Justin, thank you and bless you for everything you've been sharing with us. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Aaron. It's been fantastic just to be given this opportunity to, to not just talk to yourselves, but to talk to all the men in church and whoever else is watching. Um, I, I'm, I'm just so blessed to be asked to do this. And uh, thank you guys for your time tonight. Thanks again. Thanks again for your time. Good night to you. Hello, lads, dads and granddads. I hope everyone's doing okay. So I have been given the privilege this week of sharing our thought for the week. Um, I am going to be sharing a little bit about evangelism. Uh, before we get going, uh, let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity just to share your word and the opportunity just to get a bit deeper into what evangelism is and to encourage the men in our church. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you speak through me um, into the lives and hearts of men and young adults in our church and further beyond. Amen. Okay, so God put an amazing scripture on my heart this week. Um, and it is uh, Colossians 4, 2 to 5. And it's a little, it's that moment where Paul is going on his missionary journey, but he's having a, a tough time. So I'm just going to read our scripture. Um, Colossians 4, 2 to 5. Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that he may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders and make the most of every opportunity. All right, I'm just going to share a few kind of thoughts that God's put in my heart about that. Um, but before I do, a little bit of a background about me. Um, so I grew up in a Christian family um, with an amazing mum and dad who were passionate about Christ. Um, my dad was a pastor 
um, and he ran a really kind of rough church in a rough area of Manchester. Um, and that's who he loved. He loved that evangelistic notion of going out to finding those those rough youth that really needed to hear about Christ. And my mum followed suit. Now, my mum, she was a real prayer person. And that kind of launches us straight into verse 2. And verse 2 kind of says, Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for being watchful and thankful. Devoting ourselves to prayer. Man, my mum would have prayed morning, afternoon, Evening, she'd have prayed all day long. Um, and I remember a moment, um, I must have been like eight or nine, and we're in Morrison's, and I see mum pushing a trolley, and she's like talking to herself. So I'm like, what on earth? So I go over to mum, say, hey, you okay? And she's, yeah, um, I'm just praying. God's just put a person on my heart in the shop that I've seen, and I'm just praying for them. And she'd have done that all the time. Um, mum had a book for prayer. And any time that, you know, she prayed something or God put something on her heart, she'd have wrote it down in the book. And any time the prayer was answered, she'd have run over to me and she'd be like, hey, Luke, look, God's answered another prayer. Um, she was just committed. Now, you know, for me, my prayer life has not always been amazing. I've been through periods of great and just like, hey, God, I'm praying in the morning. And then periods where life maybe just got too busy and I'm almost like forgetting about prayer, which is a crazy thing to think about. So my first encouragement today, guys, is just to get ourselves back into prayer in the morning. And just to, hey, God, what have you got for me today? Um, I'm giving this day to you. Um, yeah, just get back into our prayer life the best we can. All right, second part I want to talk about. That looks at verse 3 and 4, and it says this. Pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, that we may speak clearly. The idea of an open door. Now, a lot of you know I lived in Uganda for six years, um, especially if you were in my home group, because I don't stop going on about it. Um, but when I was in Uganda, I met some amazing people, and again, prayer was like the foundation of everything we did. We prayed all the time. Um, it was incredible. My prayer life over there was amazing. Um, and it was also amazing because of a certain man. Now, I lived with a guy called Mafias. Um, and Mafias had huge challenges in life. Um, he suffered with HIV AIDS um, from birth. And this physically and mentally and emotionally just drained him completely. Um, many times where he was in hospital and really, really struggling. Um, but Mafias was this incredibly devoted Christian and was always had this open door. So this one evening, um, we lived in a small little flat um, in a real kind of lovely area in Kampala, the capital city. And right outside is a little market. And I just say, hey, Mafia, so like, go get some chips and we can come and chill out back out, back in the flat. So we go out, you know, I'm looking for my chips. And Mafia is like, hey, he's looking around. And he grabs me and pulls me over. He said, like, hey, Luke, God just put that guy in my heart. Let's go pray for him and, you know, we'll see what happens. And I'm just like, no, thanks. I really just want to get my chips and chill out. But that was Mafia, always ready for that open door, looking around, thinking about, hey, God, who do you want me to speak to? Um, I learned some incredible things while I was with him. But that's the thing. We go over to this guy. We pray for him. Matthias tells me about Christ. And boom, the guy's like, yeah, great. I've been waiting for this. He gives his life to Christ. And over the next couple of weeks, he started coming to church with Matthias. And that was it. Waiting for that open door. It was just amazing to see how it worked over there. But what does that look like now? At the moment, you know, everything has changed for us. And um, that open door, that evangelistic looking is massively changed for me. In school, I don't really have the opportunity to speak to a whole lot of people anymore. I mean, I'm in my little bubble. Um, I've got to wear a mask all day long. I can't take it off while I'm in school. Um, I don't get to see a lot of other teachers, even to have that open opportunity to share Christ. Uh, I know a lot of you are working at home. Um, you're not even seeing your colleagues and maybe you're just working through Skype or Zoom. Um, and maybe some of our young adults, you know, you're in school as well, the little bubble, or you don't get to see the same friendship groups that you would have used to see, or maybe that person that you started to talk to Christ about, you don't really get to see them that much anymore. Um, and it's become difficult. But that isn't the end of the story. Evangelism hasn't stopped. But why I want to say is evangelism is just changing slightly. We have seen our church do some incredible videos um, over the past kind of five or six months. We're reaching out in new ways and, you know, it's time for us to kind of adapt and best we can in this really hard time, take a step outside of that box, whatever that is. Is it, you know, texting a friend that you haven't spoken to for a while, like giving a wee phone call? What is it to open up our opportunities for evangelism? 
Um, so point three then, just my final point. Um, look at uh, verse five. Um, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Kind of similar to what I was saying. Um, school at the moment for me is it's hectic. It's the busiest it has ever been. Um, getting the changes around. I'm in a classroom where I have to be two meters away from my children uh, at all times as best as I can. Um, new way of teaching. Uh, I've got to work over on, on a computer on my kids. Um, I've got computers, which we're very lucky to have, but, you know, it's completely different for me. So I'm finding that my working life is just coming into my home life a lot more. I'm doing a lot more planning at home and I'm just busy. And I'm not allowing myself to be ready to share. I'm not allowing myself to have time. I'm not really opening up on every opportunity, maybe. I'm missing out on a few opportunities because my life is so busy. But that's okay. Life is going to get busy. But it's now how can we use that spare little bit of time to evangelise? Like I just said, maybe it is just phoning or texting a friend. Or maybe it's sending a scripture through. Or maybe it's writing a poem and posting it on social media. Whatever it is, it's taking the, every single opportunity that we can. Um, I read a story the other day about a guy in London who wanted to use his walks, his social distancing walks that he was doing over the past couple of months um, and use them for some kind of way of evangelism. So he, you know, he could take that opportunity um, and he was making the most of it. So he had a T-shirt and on his T-shirt, he said, hey, he had, um, I love Jesus. If you want to speak to me, you know, we can do it social distancing. He just took his opportunity on his social walks and that's amazing to hear something different, something new. So yeah, guys, I just want to really encourage you um, to take every opportunity you can, even in this busy time. Yeah, so just to kind of recap that then, the final few points. Number one, pray. Let's get back into prayer. Let's open up our day. Say, hey, God, who have you got for me to speak to today? Or who do you want me to pray about today? Number two, um, listening and waiting for that open door that new open door, that new avenue that we can walk in and, man, you know, best as we can, taking that step outside of our, our box, our comfort zone, which is so hard for me and I know a lot of us to do. Um, and then free them, making the most of every opportunity to share the Christ. Get that one minute testimony of, of you, of how you became a Christian, just in case you've got that little bit of extra time. Something different that we can just do to share with Christ. All right, guys, I hope that's helped. And, yeah. Have a lovely week. Bye. Well, sure, wasn't that? Uh, just something else tonight, listening to uh, Justin and I just, I don't know, just hearing how open and honest he was about his journey over the past number of years. Yeah, thank you again to Justin and to Luke for uh, sharing in today's broadcast with us. Uh, if you have really been blessed, if you've really appreciated today's message, do like share or subscribe whether you're watching this on facebook or youtube let other people know about it as well tell your friends about it send them a link if you're able to uh, or get in contact with somebody who's able to help you with that uh, you're able to share these messages just at the click of a button it's a tremendous gift to be able to do that so do take advantage of it and uh, look back for previous content. You'll be able to see Justin doing uh, a skill share. He mentioned in the interview about uh, making masks for personal protection uh, during the start of the pandemic. Uh, and you can see how he was able to do that in some of our earlier videos. So do look back on our previous content and you'll see uh, a number of people able to share. Do remember to tune in again next month, uh, the last Saturday in October, where we will have another interview uh, and another thought shared with you. Uh, and who knows, there's other uh, surprises on the way that we are working hard at in the background. So keep keep an eye on our Facebook page and the, um, and the emails and other newsletter information that will be coming to keep you updated with our work. So thank you once again for joining us this month. And may the Lord bless you and uh, keep safe as we keep going on each day. And we look forward to joining you then. Thanks.